Hello everyone, my name is Christian Eschbach, and welcome to another one of my album reviews. Welcome to part four of Two Nights of Metallica in Detroit, Michigan. 2023. Oh my god. This was... Okay, so... Please, if you have not watched part one, two, and three yet, go watch part one, two, and three first and come back and watch this one. Especially since there is story in part one that kind of carries on and is important the whole way through. So, I'm not going to talk about the openers. Uh, I am going to mention that I am really bummed out that through drama from episode one that I talked about, I miss getting to see Wolfgang or Mammoth WVH. I really wanted to see Wolfgang Van Halen live. Didn't happen. Moving on. All right. So what is the conclusion of this? So you think over two nights, there would be love to all the albums. All right. Every album almost gets a little bit of love, but there were some albums that got left out. Now, we all know Lulu is not going to be played at all, okay? If anything from Lulu got played, that'd be a frigging miracle. Now, I forgot to mention during part two and three that Kirk and Rob do this little uh, jamming around um, in the earlier part of the night. The first night they do a jam and riff called Primo. That was kind of fun and enjoyable. Really enjoyed that. The second night they did one called uh, Motown Yotown, I believe. <laughs> I wasn't as big on but I could hear some potential for some music writing later on down the line maybe that could come out of the jams uh, it is what it is uh, but that is neither here nor there that has nothing to do with the rest of this so let's talk about albums so as I mentioned Lulu we don't know that's not going to get covered uh, Beyond Magnetic is an EP so we can excuse that one for not getting covered Garage, now depending on you want to split it, I'm old school, so I understand that Garage Days Re-Revisited was an EP of its own outside of Garage Inc. So technically Garage Days, the EP, did not get visited, but Garage Inc. at least did. We at least got uh, Whiskey in the Jar for a cover off of Garage Inc. So Garage Inc. at least got one representation on that one. That's cool. Then, um, the other album that got absolutely no love whatsoever was Load. Load got absolutely no love at any of our shows. Not a single song. Didn't get Until It Sleeps, which would have thought maybe. Possibly Hero of the Day. I mean, they played Hero of the Day last time I saw them, so that's no big deal. They played Until It Sleeps last time I saw them, too. But surprisingly, neither of those. I absolutely would have loved to have seen Outlaw Torn. But without the symp symp uh, symphony, sorry, would not have been the same. Um, and, you know, you kind of start looking at it, you know, but no bleeding me. You know, it's just kind of like, what happened? What 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 happened to load? Wasting my hate? What happened to load? No love. No love over two nights for load. And load I mean I the load tour and the reload tour were two of the shows that I saw them at. They mentioned playing at the Palace of Auburn Hills during their show, which would have been the re uh, the load tour. Not a single Load song played the entire night, course of two nights, and only one reload song. Ah, it's kind of painful for me a little bit, especially on the reload side since I love reload. Yeah, Kill 'em all, reload my two favorite albums. Kill 'em all if I'm pressed to pick one, but Kill 'em all, reload are my two favorites. Uh, and speaking of Kill 'em all, 
Uh, so reload, just really quickly, fuel's the only song that got played off that. You'd know that already if you watched the other videos and you'd know when it got played. So when I do these, these are going to be completely out of order and I'm not saying what was on what night. See, that's what the other videos are for. Go watch those. Okay. Um, then after that, so going into Kill em All, as I said, you only got two songs off of Kill em All, and that was Whiplash and Seek and Destroy. Me personally, myself, it wouldn't have worked for the way they did the shows, but me personally, myself, I would have loved to have seen Four Horsemen live, and I would have substituted Whiplash with Four Horsemen. That's, that's me. But that's only because I've never gotten to see Four Horsemen live, whereas I have seen Whiplash, and all oh, Seek and Destroy must be played live over the course of the two nights once is acceptable. Uh, Ride the Lightning. They literally played the entire album of Ride the Lightning except for Escape and Trapped Under Ice over the course of the two nights. If I were changing up the set list, I would not change any of those songs in there, but I definitely would have added Escape and Trapped Under Ice over the course of the two nights just to say that they played it because they never play those two songs. And yes, I do mention songs I would have dropped in order to get that down the line. Uh, Master of Puppets, we got a good chunk of the album. We got Leper Messiah, Orion, Master of Puppets, and Welcome Home Sanitarium. Now, out of that, I would have substituted Welcome Home Sanator Sanitarium with a thing that should not be. I understand why they have to play Sanitarium, but I personally would have substituted in the thing that should not be, and I think a lot of the fans would have been okay with that too. Since they always play Sanitarium. I mean, there's some people it was definitely their first concert because James even pointed that out. But. Now, going through all this, you're going to notice the next couple albums that we talk about here. I, when I go on about them not showing load any love and barely any love to reload. Realistically. You can't blame it on, well, those are, you know, the Newstead era, you know, and they don't want to play that because the next two albums are represented fairly, sort of. And the way is, the reason I say sort of is Justice only got two songs, okay? And for Justice, it was Harvester of Sorrow and One. Would I have swapped out either of those songs? No. 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 Could other songs from Justice have gotten put on there? Sure, but I got other songs I would have rather have seen than songs off, than you know Justice. One is the only song off of Justice that I feel is mandatory. Getting Harvester of Sorrow is pretty fucking cool. It is. All right, then we get to the Black Album. Ugh. Go watch the first. Go watch. Go watch episode two and three on my opinion when it comes to the Black Album if you don't already know it. All right, so cool. Coolness, we got Through the Never. That's awesome. We got Nothing Else Matters and Sad But True. And I would have dropped both of those in a heartbeat to get escaped and trapped under ice. In a heartbeat to get the two other Lightning Out songs to get a complete play of that whole album over the course of the two nights. I know other people would have been highly upset, but that, fuck them! <laughs> The, then we got The Unforgiven, which I would not have traded out for the world. Wherever I May Roam, which I would not have traded out for the world. And Enter Sandman, which, yeah, okay, I'm going to say we could have traded out, but no, really, you can't. You had to play that one. Especially if I want to drop Nothing Else Matters and Sad But True. Enter Sandman has to still at least get played. Uh, as I mentioned with Reload, Fuel was the only song that got played off of Reload. Load was completely ignored. Reload, we only got Fuel. Personally, I would have loved to have had Fixer added in there, but that means Metallica would have had to come on stage earlier to get that extra long song in there because there was nothing for me to drop in, at this point to get another song in there. And I'll get into that as we go. Um, Garage only got Whiskey in the Jar. It was the only one that was covered from there. St. Anger got represented. St. Anger, I want, I want to load... No representation. St. Anger, representation. Now, we got Dirty Windows, which is really cool. Uh, not a song I ever would have expected to get. First off, I really was not expecting anything from St. Anger. 
I was, so to get anything from Zan Anchor was kind of cool. To get Dirty Windows was really cool in its own because I just was not expecting it. However, I would have substituted that for the unnamed feeling myself, but that's okay. We're all right. I can live with that. Then we get to Death Magnetic, which only got one song, which was The Day That Never Comes. Made me cheer up. Oh my God. <sighs> Beautiful intro. That intro live is just... I say I would substitute this song because there is another song I would have rather have heard. But that intro live is just magnificent. However, I would have substituted it for All Night Marijuana because, oh my God, that song is just badass. Um, hardwired to self-destruct, we get hardwired, which I would have substituted for now that we're dead. I absolutely love now that we're dead and I'm kind of bummed out. I didn't get that one because Lars is drumming on that one is awesome. So I'm really kind of bummed and moth into the flame, which if I had a choice between getting Moth into the flame, or say getting outlaw torn off of load, I would have given up moth into the flame in a second so I can have outlaw torn in a second without a second thought. Uh, would I have dropped moth into flame in to get until it sleeps or bleeding me or? I would have dropped it for wasting my hate as well. I would have dropped it for wasting my hate. But um, I wouldn't have dropped it for anything else. It would have been wasting my hate or Outlaw Torn. I would have dropped Moth for. But uh, other than that, I was okay with it being there. Um, I actually would have dropped Moth to get Fixer as well. I really would have loved for them to have played Fixer. They never play Fixer. I hate the bullshit attitude towards Fixer. Fixer is a great song. And live, I'd love to hear it live. All right. Then we get to 72 seasons. Now, I love when Metallica tours a new album. Because when Metallica tours a new album, they actually tour the album. And, you know, that being said, so we got, what was it, six six songs off of there. You got Lux Eterna, Too Far Gone, Shadows Follow, 72 Seasons, If Darkness Had a Sun, and You Must Burn. I think quite a few of the songs on there would have been in interchangeable and I would have swapped out a few of them. Uh, Too Far Gone, I would have s swapped out for Sleepwalk My Life Away because uh, Rob's got some badass bass on that one. I would have absolutely loved to have heard live. I definitely would have swapped out 72 Seasons for Inamorata and If Darkness Had a Sun for Crown of Barbed Wire. Uh, you Must Burn... Could have been a swap out song as well, except it was really cool live with the live presentation on that one. So for that, I'll keep it there. Um, I also would have been willing to give up Shadows Follow or You Must Burn or both of them to get Fixer and, and or Outlaw Torn. Let me be very clear. I really wanted those two songs really badly. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I was really thrown off by the fact that there was no love whatsoever, whatsoever for Load. That was kind of really, really a bit of a throw off for me. Um, the whole way around, the, the experience was fantastic. If you've watched all four of these videos now, and this is the fourth one, and you've heard the story the whole way through, night two... No problems, no hiccups. We got over there. The only hiccup is we didn't catch all of uh, Ice Nine kills. And I, I'm okay with that. They weren't bad, but it wasn't a big deal. Um, I forgot my credit card the second night at home by accident. So I there was some other merch I would have liked to have picked up. But unfortunately, unfortunately, I was not able to pick up. I only was able to get a shirt for myself. I got a shirt for Tracy. And I got some bandanas for the kids. Uh, would I have done anything different with the experience? Oh my God. So the whole parking thing on night one, I would have done differently because we we on night two, we decided to do the phone app parking thing. We should have done that on night one. It was so much easier, so much more convenient. But still, 40 bucks for parking is ridiculous, especially for one night. And that's what we paid on night one. 
which was only half of what we paid on night two in total. Uh, but the price gouging in Detroit, I got some issues with that, man. There was some major price gouging. Another issue I've got is how cashless Detroit has gone. I've got huge issues with that, like everywhere, e even in the concert itself. Concerts, the one spot where cash is usually king, man. All digital, man. I was not happy about that at all. Not in the slightest. Um, but what are you going to do? Uh, while editing this last episode, I decided to go to uh, setlist.fm, uh, pull up the stats for the um, M72 World Tour, okay? Now, the M72 World Tour is listed as having 12 shows. So this is what the breakdown was like. So 12 shows being two nights for each show. Um, you know, one set list, one night, different set list the next night. Okay, so keep this in mind. All right, so we have 72 seasons was played. Every, okay, so until I say otherwise, every one of these songs was played at every show on one of the two nights anyways. 72 seasons, Creeping Death, Enter Sandman, Fade to Black, For Whom the Bell Tolls, Fuel, Harvester of Sorrow, If Darkness Had a Son, Lexi Turna, Master of Puppets, Nothing Else Matters, One Orion, Ride the Lightning, Sad But True, Seek and Destroy, Call of Cthulhu, uh, Welcome Home Sanitarium, Wherever I May Roam, Whiskey in the Jar, and You Must Burn. Those were played at every one of the shows. No ifs, ands, or buts. Here's where it starts fluctuating. Moth into Flame and The Day That Never Comes got played at 11 shows. For what got played at some of the lesser shows I would have traded, but we'll get into that. Hold on. <laughs> Whiplash got played at 9 shows. Oh, there were shows they did not open with Whiplash? Oh, okay. Moving along. Then we got Battery and King Nothing played at eight shows. They played King Nothing at eight different shows, and mine was not one of them. <laughs> mm. <Yeah>. Okay. <sighs> Blackened, Leper Messiah... Shadows Follow, The Unforgiven, and Too Far Gone got played at seven different shows. I got all of those at ours. Um, I don't, or except for Blackened, I didn't get Blackened. I didn't get Blackened, and I didn't get Battery. I'm okay with not getting either of those. Um, wasn't a big deal to me. Hardwired. And Holier Than Thou were played at six different shows. Um, Dirty Windows, No Leaf Clover. Oh my. Fuck. Dirty Windows, No Leaf Clover, Screaming Suicide, Sleepwalk My Life Away, and Until It Sleeps were played at five different shows. Dirty windows I got. I would have loved to have had any of the other four. Specifically, I would have loved No Leaf Clover. Oh my god, I would have loved to have seen No Leaf Clover live. Sleepwalk My Life Away. I mentioned that. That I would have liked to have seen that one. And Until It Sleeps. God damn it, I got no load representation in two nights. And there were two different songs on the tour that I could have seen. Oh! Plus, No Leaf Clover was in there. And there's another song I'm a little annoyed with. It. Oh god. Okay. Um, the Memory Remains was done at four different shows. I was a little surprised when they did Fuel and Not Memory Remains right away afterwards, because that usually is how it used to go, so it was kind of cool they didn't do it the exact same as they've done it in the past. But Memory Remains is a cool song live. It really is. When the crowd does the chant and everything, it's awesome. All right. Fight Fire with Fire was only done at three shows. So, I do consider myself lucky on that one. Through the Never was done at two different shows. <laughs> and then Cyanide and I Disappear were both played at one show each on this tour. Fuck! 
I would have loved to have seen I disappear and cyanide. Both of them live would have been fantastic. Oh my god. Oh. Damn. Damn. No. Sorry, temper tantrum over. All right, so I just wanted to go through this. So those are the songs that were covered at one point or another through the M72 tour. Oh, some of the songs I could have had. Now, I mean, obviously there's songs I would have liked to have seen that there was no way they were going to play live. And that is clearly shown here through this. One day, maybe I'll get lucky. Who knows? All right, folks. Back over to finish this out. Anyways, folks, uh, I do thank you very much for joining me on this journey here. Um, if you are in the city of Windsor, this is my last plug for this, um, because at this point, by the time you watch this, it's coming up on the night. So, Project Zero Hour Prototype is going to be released for the first time for public exhibition at Barbershop Bar on Howard Avenue. You'll have to do a Google Maps to get there. It's at the corner of Howard and Eugenie. I do not remember what the address is. Sorry, I'm bad for that stuff. Anyways, this is a cool, trippy, psychedelic movie starring Shawnee B, who is a local karaoke legend in his own right. He's actually a karaoke champion. He has won first place of $1,000 in the same karaoke contest I was in. I basically managed him through that. But anyways, Shawnee B stars in this movie. The movie also features myself acting in it and the legendary Drucifer, both of us from the Howling Odyssey. You can go check that out. Um, and this is a Howling Odyssey production. So that is awesome. Gotta come and check it out. It's a really cool movie that it is designed to be danced to. It's only $7 Canadian, so it's really cheap. So if you're watching this in Detroit, you want to come over, man. This is something worth coming over. It's easy to drive to if you take the tunnel as well. Almost a straight shot. Only a little bit of zigzagging, but not a lot. Real easy. Anyways, folks. Uh, comments, like, subscribe, bell for notification. If you're, if you've been watching this on Rumble, there is the join and follow button. Peace, love, take care. Metallica!